welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. The nature of illusions and fantasies is ephemeral. They give way after time because they do not abide by the laws of the natural world. And those who choose to hold on to them go mad time and time again. Around this time last year, I was deeply committed to the fantasy. I wanted to live in it for as long as possible, ignoring any even slightly unsavory real world thing that crossed my line of sight. And I had a companion too, Cammy. We encouraged each other to maintain this illusion, to maintain our fantasy, to live for beauty, for experience, to make every moment count, and to resist with every ounce of effort a normal way of life. And just to make a disclaimer right now before we get into this story, I still believe in the fantasy, but I'm not gonna let it destroy me the way it has attempted to. This video is simply intended to describe to you what it feels like to fall from very, very high heights. During this time that I'm talking about, I made a video, I mean, I made several videos about our life, but specifically the most honestly insane one was called I have no tolerance for reality if you guys remember and that is really how I felt I mean I still feel that way I do have very little tolerance but in order to live in fantasy you need to also make sure that you take care of the real world things first before you make your exit <laughs> And during that time, the few months before the end of last year, me and Cammie would reach an absolute height of our grand delusion. And that is where we can start our story during that time. When we look back at that time, which we do with frequency, we started to give it a name. We called that period of about four, three or four months, the golden period. And it was truly idyllic. It was a period of forever shining sun, even though it took place in the fall. This was a time where we actively implemented the philosophy of sensualism into our lives. If you don't know what sensualism is, it's a lifestyle philosophy that I've created. Please feel free to watch the video above. We were committed to taking care of the senses, opening ourselves up to the world around us, paying attention, having new experiences, doing things that people only dreamed about doing, doing things that people only talked about, we were both fortunate to have a very, very good work-life balance. Both of us had the same days off. It was about three or four days at a time. So this really allowed us to steep into the fantasy. We both had lovers and the relationships with them completely illogical, which we love them for that. And being in love during a time like that adds just this extra dimension of delirium to it all. Cami and I both wanted the same thing beauty and art to be the center of our lives. Every day was an opportunity to create. Every movement, every gesture could be controlled and curated. We were austere about how we ate. We created our own strange diets. We moved furniture into different rooms every month. We would go on road trips and not tell anyone. We made our own clothes. We watched the most obscure films imaginable and they only justified our way of life more. We would go to our second home, which is a coffee shop near our neighborhood. We'd spend all hours of the day there, writing, making art, theorizing, talking about nothing, romanticizing our life. We felt mythical, I'll tell you. Everything had symbolism and meaning. We even changed our names. We initiated ourselves into this rebirth and we just rode on this wave of a myth that we were writing for ourselves. We called ourselves two ghosts, living in this world but not part of it. We watched the sun come up many times and hear the world get up out of bed while we went to dream. We were so in our bubble that we mostly only hung out with one another. We were seen everywhere together like this, like twins. We both realized that our way of life could not be explained to other people, that it should not be explained. It could only be us two in that world, no outside influences. A lifestyle that extreme just can't be penetrated. There's no visitors, no foreigners. And the world we created maintained its potency with this restriction. We basically quarantined ourselves in that life. We both obviously live in the same apartment and we called it the houseboat. Due to reading a short story, by the same name by Anais Nin. 
Nin's houseboat, which the houseboat is a short story in her collection of short stories called Under a Glass Bell. And that collection of short stories, if you can gather any kind of metaphor from the title Under a Glass Bell, makes a lot of sense and has a lot of correlation to the way that we were living. Nin's houseboat was a refuge for the self-alienating artist those who steer away from the normal life. And that's exactly what our apartment was. It was a refuge, this sanctum that was untouched by the outside world, the world we didn't want to be a part of. And Anais Nin would be referred to many times as our mother because she represented secrecy, illusion, and a vast mental interior that we both sympathized with. Nin was also one of the few successful artists to actually live in a world completely of her own creation. Granted, it was through deception, but successful regardless. She also represented surrealist and illogical thought, which guided and justified many of our excursions and our thoughts. On New Year's last year, Cami and I would then sport matching silhouette chokers. I do not have mine on right now because my the thread of mine broke. And this was a way to like signify our artistic union, that we were two halves of the same whole. We felt bonded as sisters, we still do. Not of blood, but of the mind. We shared the same thoughts and acted as if telepathic. I would do something and she would say, I was just going to do that. Or we'd wake up in the morning and we'd both have the same agenda for the day. I hate to say, you know, we'd finish each other's sentences and stuff like that, but it really was like that. It's like we were just sharing the same thoughts all the time. This went on even to an insane degree. One night, without planning anything. And this type of thing happens all the time to us. One night without planning, we both invited our parents out to dinner at the same restaurant reserved for the same time. We both ordered the same cocktail and both of our cocktail glasses had chips in the glass. It was, it was really crazy. It's just things you can't ignore. What I'm trying to communicate here is that our fantasy world felt tied together by something higher than ourselves. We felt led by something and brought together by something. And we never thought we would ever find somebody so eerily similar to ourselves. And our life felt perfect. Every minuscule detail felt divinely aligned. It was harmony, like that's what we were living in. It was a perfect harmony. Even aesthetically, we were on the same page. I mean. I would find messes in our apartments that looked like still lives. And it, it still happens to this day. I mean, I look inside our refrigerator and it just, there's an order, there's a perfection to it. I just posted it on our Instagram. I mean, it's like crazy to live with somebody that just, you can live that harmoniously with. Our outfits coordinated, we shared the same rituals. I mean, like it was utterly intoxicating. We were obsessed with ourselves and our fucking gorgeous life. Then came December. December was fine, but reality kind of began a slow dismantling around Christmas. And ever since about mid-January, we kept saying like we were trying to get back on track. We kept feeling like we were playing catch up with ourselves. Like we weren't living the life that we had been living like a month prior. We needed to like get back to the shop to make art, have more conversations about eroticism and art out of nowhere, eat the same way, continue the same strange experiences. And as ugly and harsh as this sounds, Christmas is a time for giving. It's a time for family, for love, for sharing. And that's what sent a ripple into our world. We couldn't be sealed away from everybody anymore. It's a time where you're with other people all the time and you're thinking about others. We didn't have any time to be selfish and you need to be selfish to live in the world we created. It's an extreme and we recognize that. And we fought from mid-January on to stay devoted to our fantasy world, but it just seemed like it was to no avail. What I figured out later while looking through my journal because I documented everything that we did was that our way of life never really stopped. We still lived sensually, but the hysteria of beauty had lost its luster and we didn't feel the potency of our actions anymore. And we were really stuck on the past and how the holidays fucked us up and we would just hold on to that for months. On top of that, of course, 
real life inconveniences were looming. Our romances started to crumble. My vehicle decided to stop functioning properly, so I had to sink a lot of my savings into it. My job after the new year had become so emotionally taxing that my days off, which were three to four days at a time, were spent literally just relaxing because I was so stressed out. We were losing money and we didn't want to change our work situations. Then of course, I'm 26, we're both 26. So the threat of health insurance, losing health insurance that is provided from your family is there. And then of course, after COVID and everything, student loans are back on in September. All of this real life stuff was starting to surface. March would turn out to be like the most bleak month of the year. Nothing really happened. It was just gray and sad and stagnant. I honestly don't know a single person who likes that month either. It dragged on. But in the middle of March, I would make plans to participate in an artist's residency in May, which felt like hope for a transition for both of us. I thought it would be like a really serious kickstart into my career as an artist. I didn't know what was going to happen after, but I was convinced that it was good and it was going to be drastic. We both felt that May was going to be a turning point. However, we did not anticipate what would actually happen. I would put pretty much the rest of my savings into not working and making art for an entire month. And that would be the last glimmer of the fantasy world. The last radiance of cloudless skies. Cammie would, as she had planned, come to see my show at the end of May. And then we returned back to the houseboat together. Then started June, the beginning of the end. We woke up a few days after the beginning of June and we were fraught with anxiety. My residency ended in absolutely nothing at all. And both of us were back in the same spot as when we started and how we felt at the end of March and the end of April. After an entire year of living beautifully and living for art, we had nothing to show for ourselves, no leads. The future just seemed so bleak. We had no idea where we were going with our lives at all. Just the same old merry-go-round. Each day we woke up feeling so sick to our stomachs that it was, you couldn't avoid that feeling. We needed to start something. We needed to make something for ourselves or we would just go insane. We tossed around business ideas, committed to them, then didn't, pretty much all my fault. We just knew for sure that we couldn't work for other people because we were just too different. Cammy, with her back against the wall knew what she wanted to do and she's going for it. But I just was left with choices. I felt like that's all I had. An endless secession of choices. The world opening up to me like a lion's jaw does. I dipped my toe in so many different interests over the years that I didn't know which one I should go all in with. It's like Sylvia Plath's proverbial fig tree. All the eventualities, I could see them, were rotting in front of me the more I waited. And all at once I remembered again that I had never chosen a singular path only for myself. Someone else has always been involved. I never only considered myself. And I had to truly ask, what do I want? Where do I want to go? And this correlates to why potency of beauty can only survive in a selfish atmosphere. Once you include other people, things start to get messy. You either sacrifice your humanity for your individuality or your individuality for your humanity. Compromise, that fucking hideous, logical, human choice. And then my inability to choose administered the final blow. I would lose my lover to my indecisiveness. I didn't deserve to involve someone else romantically because I didn't trust myself or believe anything I said. I lost him, I turned him away. It was all over, over. The mirage just dissipated. And this collapse, let me tell you, I swear to God was so real that it entered a fucking physical dimension whenever our ceiling and our apartment started to have water pour from it onto the floor. And then there was an insane leak coming from our faucet in our kitchen. It was like the fantasy world we built, airtight, encased in 10 inch thick glass. 
was now cracking and letting an ocean of repressed thoughts and ignored realities through. I am really surprised that I just haven't had a total mental breakdown. I've cried a lot. And just to let everyone know now, like this collapse is still happening. It's just in slow motion. So you're witnessing this in real time. The loftiness that I adored about our life so much left me with no safety net, no parachute. I was just free falling into the abyss. This loftiness was not making commitments, no promises, no eventualities, and that worked. It was a perfect time for a year. For some, that kind of fantasy can last for much longer, and I'm jealous, but that's not how the universe had it intended for me. I am now sitting like a mad person in the rubble of my life and my carelessness, trying to choose, trying to mend, trying to be honest and have integrity. Each day that has gone by has been the same as the last. Things have not gotten clearer. My only hope is that with time and patience, things will be revealed. And I'm just not gonna be okay for a long time. And the people around me suffer due to this. The fantasy is real. That's a paradox I live by. But fantasies are fleeting. I know I'll have many of them in my life. Life is nothing but ups and downs. And beauty comes and goes just like anything else. But one thing that I can recover from the ashes of my life is that my life does have purpose. I've gotta like pull myself together. I did not expect to start crying. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> wow, it's like, it's really hard to continue this. <sighs> I guess you guys know that this is real and not a fucking story. This is real. My life is given purpose by my unceasing pursuit for beauty and art. And that's what it is. It's a pursuit. It's a hunt. And despite this fall being a hard one, I would do it a thousand times over. The past year has been the best year I've ever known. And I strive to have many more just like it and even better. But for now, I'm low, I'm confused, and I'm wounded. I don't know when things are going to get better. I'm just living day to day and just looking up at the sky for answers and looking for my lost friend, Beauty.